Greetings, everybody. This is Pastor Joshua Sullivan at Holy Cross Lutheran Church in Kerrville, Texas. And I'm so glad you're here with me for this episode of ATP, Ask the Pastor. Today's question, dear pastor, do you think that the RSV and the NRSV are reliable Bible translations? What are the differences and similarities between these translations and the KJV and NKJV? So RSV stands for Revised Standard Version. It was first published in 1952, and it was a revision of the American Standard Version of uh, 1901. It was then the basis for the new Revised Standard Version, the NRSV of 1989. It was also the basis then of the English Standard Version of 2001. Uh, it was remarkably popular in its heyday uh, for several decades and went through several revisions. The RSV is different from the KJV uh, and the New King James in a couple different ways. The first major difference uh, is a textual difference. Uh, the uh, RSV uses different texts than the KJV New King James. So the RSV's Old Testament is based on the Masoretic text, Masoretic Hebrew text, but parts of the Old Testament, uh, such as the prophet Isaiah, uh, are heavily influenced by the Dead Sea Scrolls. The KJV Old Testament is based on the Hebrew Masoretic text, uh, but is lightly influenced by the Greek Septuagint and the Latin Vulgate. Now the New Testament, then, the New Testament text used for the first edition of the RSV was the 17th edition of the eclectic Nestle Aland text, while the KJV New King James rely upon the received text, sometimes called its Latin name, the Textus Receptus. What all this means is that the RSV is using different Greek texts for its New Testament than the KJV, while using mostly similar or somewhat similar Hebrew texts for its Old Testament. Textually, the RSV and NRSV are, is, is different from the KJV New King James. The second major difference between the RSV and the KJV New King James is that the RSV really tries to straddle the line between formal equivalency and a dynamic equivalency. So formal equivalency uh, means that the translation is more word for word, while dynamic equivalency means the translation is more thought for thought. So there's a little bit more interpretation going on in the translation process. Formal equivalency in translations is, is always, always superior. The new Revised Standard Version, then, uh, is more in line with formal equivalency. However, we can't say it is a formal equivalency translation uh, because uh, it uses gender-neutral language. The other major difference, then, and the one where we want to spend more of our time here, the difference between RSV and KJV, then, is the translation itself. So everyone's familiar with the archaic language of the KJV to some extent. So the KJV uses um, words like thou, thee, and thy this, uh, as second person pronouns. And KJV uses, those, uh, uses this for God and when it's referring or speaking to man. The RSV does something different though. It utilizes those archaic forms of the second person pronouns only when God is the referent. When the referent is man, then they use the modern second person pronoun you and your. This is a really novel way of differentiating between God and man in the text. Not only that, uh, but this distinction was used really, it shows the chief weakness of the RSV. Um, and that is that the RSV is weak, if not unchristian at times, in the way that it treats Christ's divinity. So, for instance, this, uh, the KJV translates Psalm 2 verse 7 like this. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. The RSV translates it this way. I will tell of the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Now, this may not seem like a big deal, but remember that the RSV only uses thou, thee, and thy when it's addressing God. What the editors do by addressing the son as you, they're pegging him as man, not as God. Uh, they're, they're subtly removing the messianic connotations from Psalm 2 that Christians have always seen simply by using the word you rather than thou. A New Testament example of this is the translation of Peter's confession of Jesus in Matthew 16, 16, you are the Christ, uh, instead of 
thou art the Christ. Now the editors of the RSV then, uh, the, the, the editors of the, that are subtle in their suggestion that Jesus isn't divine if we follow their use of the archaic and the modern second person pronouns. Similarly, uh, Psalm 16 verse 10 in the RSV reads, For thou dost not give me up to Sheol, or let thy godly one see the pit. Thou is used because God is keeping the godly one uh, from Sheol. But who is the godly one? Well, the KJV translates it more accurately as the Holy One, which is what the Hebrew text has. The Holy One being saved from corruption in Sheol is God himself, the Holy One of Israel. Another way that uh, the RSV undermines the divinity of Christ in the Old Testament is with the capitalization of messianic terms, or rather the lack thereof. So the KJV of Psalm 110 verse 1 reads, The Lord says to my Lord, and the second Lord is capitalized as well as the first because it is the Lord God speaking to the Messiah who is divine. The RSV downplays the messianic connection by leaving the second Lord in lowercase. The RSV does this also in Malachi 4 verse 2. The son of righteousness that will rise with healing in its wings is clearly the Messiah. Yet the RSV leaves both son and righteousness in the lowercase, minimizing that connection. Now, this all may not seem like a huge deal. Uh, it is, but it may not seem like a huge deal, especially considering that the original manuscripts didn't have upper and lowercase letters. But the editors of the RSV made a deliberate decision not to capitalize those titles, which Christians for centuries had understood as being references to the Messiah, who is of the same substance as God the Father. Now, now it, it may not seem like an outright denial of Christ's divinity and messianic prophecy, but when you couple all those things with the RSV's handling of a major messianic prophecy, Isaiah 7, 14, then it really becomes difficult to be charitable to the RSV committee and to give them the benefit of the doubt. So Isaiah 7, 14 in the New King James reads, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Like the KJV before it, it translated the Hebrew word Alma as virgin. Now, this is clearly the, a messianic prophecy of the virgin birth of Jesus, the Messiah. The editors of the RSV, though, claiming that there was insufficient evidence to translate Alma as virgin, instead translates it as young woman, effectively removing Christ from the passage. It was this sort of Judaizing uh, that, that led the RSV to be terribly popular, among, or terribly unpopular, rather, amongst more conservative Christians. And by Judaizing, uh, I mean reading the Old Testament from a Jewish perspective, not a Christian one. That's how uh, John Calvin, for instance, approached the Old Testament, often deferring to the rabbis' interpretations of the OT over historic Christian interpretations. Uh, Calvin read many of the Messianic prophecies of the OT without Christ. Uh, the Lutheran theologian Agidius Hunius uh, took Calvin to task for this in his brief work, The Judaizing Calvin, which I highly recommend. Now, I'm not saying that Calvin was the forerunner of the RSV. I'm only saying that the same spirit runs through both works. The RSV did go through a major revision in 1971 that fixed some of its problematic translations. There were overall 80 some, uh, 80 -some changes made in that revision. None of them involved Isaiah 7 verse 14 or their obscuring of Christ's divinity throughout the text. Uh, the NRSV then, the New Five Standard Version, was a revision of the RSV and published in 1989, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, the RSV continued, the, uh, R, the NRSV continued, the RSV, there we go, is continue uh, its a tendency to obscure the Old Testament messianic prophecies and Christ's divinity. What really set the NRSV apart from the crowd was that it was the first English translation to adapt a gender-neutral language. Um, I remember uh, during seminary I had one Old Testament prof who mockingly called the RSV the uh, despised substandard perversion and the NRSV the newly despised substandard perversion. The NRSV and the, and the RSV before it, frankly, they're unsuitable uh, for use by Christians, in my opinion. Uh, many of the men on the original translation committee denied things like verbal inspiration of the scriptures, the virgin birth, and, shock, Christ's divinity. Many of them doubted the messianic prophecies of the Old Testament, which uh, was apparent in their handling of those verses, and uh, most of them held up the documentary hypothesis with its layers of biblical authors, editors, and redactors. And a lot of that shows up in their translation of the text. Overall, I think the translations of both the RSV and the NRSV 
aren't clear in the places where Scripture needs to be the clearest, and that is that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Thanks for your question. We'll catch you next time on Ask the Pastor.